This is Business Analytics Using Forecasting, and I'm Galit Mueli. In this second part of Logistic Regression, we first have to answer a little riddle from part one. In the previous video, we asked why can't we just use linear regression on a binary outcome? We do get outputs, we do get performance measures, so what's the problem? If you try to use the output that we had before and generate a forecast, you'll see that we can get very strange values. We won't necessarily get a zero or a one. We won't even necessarily get a number between zero and one. So that's why typically we don't like using linear regression for forecasting a probability or a binary event. That's where logistic regression comes in. Logistic regression, like linear regression, was designed for modeling cross-sectional data, not time series. It's designed for predicting a binary outcome given a set of predictors. The predictors can be numerical, dummies, or both, just like in linear regression. Like linear regression, the coefficients from a logistic regression are interpretable, and therefore, a logistic regression is often used also in descriptive modeling. The difference between linear and logistic regression is on the left-hand side of the equation. Instead of directly using the column rain, which is a binary column, we use a function of rain that will eventually give us forecasted probabilities that are between 0 and 1. The special function is called the logit function. It's special because it can convert a binary variable into a continuous variable that can take any value from negative infinity to infinity. If we start with a binary rain variable, it can only obtain the values 0 or 1. Let's move to the probability of rain. This can take values between 0 and 1. If we take the function p over 1 minus p, this is called the odds function. Odds are commonly used in gambling and in races. Odds can take any non-negative value. The last step is to take a logarithm of the odds. The log of odds is called a logit. And this is a function that can take any value. This is the function used in logistic regression in the left-hand side of the equation. At the top, we see the logistic regression formula for our Melbourne daily rain example. The second and third equations just want to show the meaning of the logistic regression in terms of the odds of rain and the probability of rain. They are all mathematically the same. The odds equation highlights the fact that what logistic does is in fact model a multiplicative relationship between the predictors and the odds of rain. The probability equation shows the relationship between the probability of rain and the predictors. It's a very complicated nonlinear function. The only reason I'm showing you this equation is so that you remember that to generate a probability forecast requires converting the logit value using this formula. We will later see an example using this formula. Before we move on to running a logistic regression on our Melbourne daily rainfall example, let me just note that estimating a logistic regression model involves an iterative estimation method called maximum likelihood estimation. I'll not get into details, but just remember that this is a bit more complex than least squares, and it involves optimizing a function. To run logistic regression in Excel Minor, Use the classify menu. This menu includes different models for predicting a binary output using cross-sectional data. We choose the variable rain as our output and the three predictors lag1, sine, and cosine as the inputs. Here are the results of the logistic regression. We get a table of coefficients like in linear regression. However, to get a predicted probability, we need two steps. First, we multiply each coefficient by the appropriate predictor value. This gives the logit. Then, use the formula that we saw earlier to get the forecasted probability of rain. We also see the training and validation performance in the form of a classification matrix and error rates. Forecasting binary outcomes using logistic regression is currently unavailable in the R forecast package. We therefore use a different approach. Here we use the caret package. The next few lines of code read the data and create the lagged series and the seasonal dummies. 
After that, we estimate the logistic model using the GLM function, choosing family equals binomial. The summary command displays the estimated model. Then, we can generate forecasts for the validation period using the predict function. Finally, we can generate the classification matrix, also called a confusion matrix, for each of the training and validation periods using these two lines of code. Here are the results from running the R code. The top displays the estimated logistic model and its coefficients. The bottom displays the classification matrices for the training and validation periods. To generate a forecast for the first day in the validation period, we need the regression model and the data for the predictors. We can use the coefficients in column two to compute a forecast by multiplying each by the appropriate term. In this case, the previous day rained, so we multiply 0.11 by one. We then multiply the sine and cosine using the time index 3656, which corresponds to January 3rd, 2010. Multiplying the coefficients by the data gives us the forecasted logit with value of negative 0.587. To get the forecasted probability of rain, we need one more step using the formula that we saw earlier. Using this formula, we get a probability of 0.36. This is larger than the cutoff value of 0.3 that we chose up front. So we can convert the forecasted probability to a binary forecast of rain. Obviously, we don't need to compute the forecasts manually. Software typically gives you the forecasted probability and the binary forecast. Here's the result the software gives for January 3rd of 2010, which we just computed manually. We see the forecasted probability of 0.357. Note that to forecast beyond the validation period and into the future, we should remember to recombine the training and validation periods, then rerun the logistic regression, and then generate our forecasts. When we're using logistic regression, there are a few ways that we can try to improve our model. One is to try and play with a cutoff value that we're choosing. We can try a few, but be careful because if we try to optimize the cutoff or try too many values, we'll end up overfitting our data. Another approach is like in linear regression. We can try using other predictors, maybe capturing seasonality in a different way. Just remember that once you start tweaking and trying too many models, then you might be overfitting your validation period, which is equally bad. Let me conclude by summarizing the main points about logistic regression. Logistic regression can be used to generate binary forecasts based on different types of data. The data can be numerical, binary, trend indexes, seasonal dummies, or any other functions, even external predictors. This is similar to the case of a linear regression. Secondly, logistic regression is similar to linear regression in terms of being model-driven. We write an equation and then use the training data to estimate those parameters. As with all forecasting methods, we evaluate performance on the validation period. Since we're dealing with binary forecasts, we can use the classification matrix and error rates as performance measures. Lastly, as we've done with numerical forecasts, before we forecast into the future, we need to recombine the training and validation periods and rerun the logistic regression. You'll discover that the logistic regression is quite powerful and popular for binary forecasts. It's not heavy computationally, and it's relatively understandable. <laughs>